For over four decades, the This Old House team has tackled projects big and small all over the country. Hey, Kevin, boy, are we glad to see you? You know, we get that a lot, actually. <laughs> Each project is unique in its needs, budget, and story. And once you open up those walls, you never know what you're going to find. This thing is a time capsule, huh? Things are falling apart, and <laughs> I'm ready. On this special edition of This Old House, we'll take a detailed look at the Scandinavian Modern Project in Cambridge, Massachusetts. There are some people who think taking an old home and giving it a really modern interior is sacrilegious, and that's what our homeowners are doing here. But they can do whatever they want on the inside, and I think it's going to be beautiful. Cambridge, Massachusetts, located just across the Charles River from the city of Boston, is known for its world-class universities, technological innovation, and historic housing stock. But, as was the case with our homeowners in their 1887 Victorian, the restraints that come with renovating in a historic district can sometimes be a challenge. Norm, to my eye on the outside, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. What are you saying? Yeah, well, for a house this age, it's pretty much what I would expect. You got clapboards and shingles, a lot of layers of paint. You know, there's some maintenance that needs to be done with both the wood and the paint, but that's pretty typical. You have to do that. Right. And the foundation here, this brick foundation, needs some repointing, and we can take care of that. The thing that really sticks out on the front of the house is this porch. The roof is sagged, you can see the railing has dropped, that column, the whole corner is dropped down, so there could be insects. I'm sure there's rot and probably a bad footing. But you know, these things can be repaired. This is not a major sure. repair. And for a house this age, that's actually a very short list of things that you have to do. What about things that you might want to do to the outside? Well, we certainly want to paint it. Uh, we want to get rid of the fire escape. Uh, but we're actually heavily regulated both by the zoning board and the historical Ooh, commission. Okay. So not a lot we can do. We can't change the footprint. Yeah, because they're going to be watching you guys. They are. Uh, what we are going to do some work is on the inside. It needs a lot of updating to bring it up to today. Right. Okay. Well, once you start thinking about changing the inside, you could run into some structural issues. And once you open up those walls, you never know what you're going to find. The house was originally built as a two-family, but was converted to a single-family home 15 years ago. There would have been one family living upstairs and another family living behind the wall on this side. Right. And you can see there are a lot of doors. Yeah, sure. This probably would have been public space when it was a two-family and then private space there and private space upstairs, a distinction you guys no longer need. That's right. The conversion to a single family left the home with some odd configurations, including the only kitchen being located on the second floor. Wow, this like is it? dated, huh? It is. Very old appliances. Yeah, appliances that you still have to hook up to the faucet to get to work. That's right, and the old melamine cabinets. These up are top. plywood. Yeah, okay. So really ancient here. I suspect that even if you could live with a kitchen up on the second floor, this is not the kitchen you'd live with. That's right, everything is going. All right, so you don't like the layout, you don't like the kitchen, so that kind of begs the question, you know, what do you guys want to do inside? Well, Kevin, the plan is to gut the house entirely. Just gut the interior. We're gutting the interior. We want to keep the historic Cambridge Victorian look on the outside, mm -hmm. and I want it to be Scandinavian modern on the inside. Scandinavian modern? Well, wow, yes. that's a first. I don't think we've ever done that before. Where does that come from? My family is Swedish, and I've always loved Scandinavian design, and we want to have this house be bright, white walls, um, light-colored wood floors, and some right. wood details. Oh, that's exciting. We'll see what Scandinavian modern looks like. And in terms of this... Scandinavian modern design prioritizes simplicity and functionality. Clean lines, a neutral palette, and an emphasis on natural light are hallmarks of this minimalist style. To help homeowners John and Sally achieve that look, they enlisted architect Marcus Gleistein, whose own house is an homage to Scandinavian design. Look at this room. This uh, space embodies everything that we really care about in Scandinavian design. Mm -hmm. It's big, open, and organic. You know, one of the challenges they have in Scandinavia is dealing with the really long, dark winters. Right, so you guys are always trying to brighten up the house. Yes, and what we've done here is use uh, white walls, big windows, and warm ceilings. Right, so you got wood on the ceiling, and this is more of the Doug fir? Uh, same as outside. Beautiful, nice and warm, like you said. But the heart of any Scandinavian house, or any house in the north, is a great fireplace. And so this one makes a gigantic statement right here in the center of the house, although maybe not the statement I would have expected if this had been, say, an international house or a Bauhaus. I mean, we're not looking at plaster or stainless steel. I mean, look at this. You've even got some of your antique granite brought in here. Well, modern doesn't necessarily mean machine-made or cold or even new. Okay. 
Uh, over here, for example, we have a beautiful Finnish vase um, built, designed in the 30s on top of a uh, old table that has been in my family for a long time. So a table like this, this isn't an antique for antique sakes. This is something that means something to you. Now, all of the components here have a bit of family history, mm -hmm. like this old uh, hutch over here, for, also from Scandinavia. In a way, it's almost like early Scandinavian modern in that it's really simple, really functional. Right. And it's also quite beautiful. It's got some character, so you can see that it's a bit aged, but it sits right in a brand new modern kitchen. I mean, we've got the stainless steel, the crisp lines of the cabinets, this cool marble countertop. I mean, this is not a simple country kitchen. Well, it's a country modern kitchen. I'll give you that. Uh, and, you know, it, it's very carefully laid out. It's really utilitarian. It looks right out to the view. It's best summarized in this uh, amazing pot from Finland. Summarized by a pot, really? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really functional, it's really clever, and it's a great piece of sculpture for our cooktop. All right, so these words, um, simplicity, beauty, quality, practical, I mean, these are all qualities that John and Sally wanted in their house. So obviously we have got a good fit with you as our architect. I mean, look at your house. Um, but where do we stand in terms of the plans for John and Sally's place? Well, the plans are all done. We've given them to Tom, and I believe he's ready to build. All right, well, we are ready to see what you've come up with. With plans in hand, the deconstruction process got underway. The idea is to salvage as much material as possible for later resale. The crew could then strip the plaster and lath, and the transformation to Scandinavian modern could begin. So now what we want to do is we want to slide it up underneath that underlayment. Now this part of the ceiling will be wood. The rest of the ceilings will be plastic. And this is just for a look, right? Just for a look. It's going to go right here because it is a roof deck. It's going to be great space. Tommy has started the framing up here on the second floor, and Norm, he has made some serious progress. Oh, he sure has. Soon the electrician and plumbers will be working in here. Nice. Now let me take you around. At the back of the house, there's going to be a guest bedroom. It'll be okay. nice and quiet back here. Yeah, it's always nice to have a guest bedroom if right. you can. And next to the bedroom would be the laundry room. And I think this is a great idea, having the laundry room on the second floor, because that's where all the linens and dirty clothes are going to be. And I see pocket door hardware, which yeah. is also a nice feature. Right. The first bedroom here is for the younger daughter. Mm -hmm. And in between the bedrooms is this bathroom. There'll be a small tub. Uh, lavatories and a toilet. So this is a shared bathroom. It's a shared bathroom. It's good size. Yeah, pretty good size. And then the, the front, front bedroom. bedroom is, yep, that's oh, for the nice. older daughter. And this is a great room. I mean, we've got the bay window in the front here, so we've got all the light coming in off the street. Right. Nice room. So you're saying plumbers and electricians because we've now got partition walls up, ceilings are strapped, so those guys are ready to come right. in. Now speaking of ceilings, I like what Tommy does with these old houses. When you get it opened up, you want to straighten everything out if you can. There's dips and sags. So what he does is he finds the lowest point basically in the ceiling, strings some line, and then uses those lines to guide the installation of some two by fours that he nails onto the joist, and mm -hmm. then he installs the strapping. And what that gives you is a flat ceiling. It may not be perfectly level, but it's flat. Okay. Well, up here on the third floor, the master bath is at the front of the house. All right. And also a good sized bathroom. Wow, look at the size of that tub deck. That's nice. Although it is right in front of the windows, which is always a privacy concern, especially when you're in a city like we are. That's what the homeowners wanted, so that's what they get. I guess that's why we have shades. That's right. Now, between the bathroom and the bedroom is a large closet. Yeah, this is nice. And the master bedroom, of course, is back here. And it's nice because it's going to be quiet back here. And I like the cathedral ceilings. I mean, it's the best way to use all of the space up in this attic. So that's great. Right. Now, to straighten out and flatten the ceilings up here, Tom used some two by sixes. And the reason for that is, is that we want to get maximum depth for in the proper amount of insulation. Oh, ah, right. Because with the cathedral ceiling and it being an attic, this is the only place that we can get insulation. So we're going to have to fill up these rafter bays. Right. Now there are two new While progress continued inside, Roger was busy outside. The large Norway maple that towered over the house had to come down. If you look at that foliage in the top of this tree, there should be two to three times more leaves. So that tells me it's not in great shape. Okay. And we have that big structural damage over here. This tree is going to come down on its own someday. We want to take it down now before the patio goes in, the house is all refinished. This tree could cause a lot of damage if it comes down. Mm -hmm. Of course, removing the Norway maple wasn't the only change to the outside. 
Mason Mark McCullough repointed the entire brick foundation. So I know you have to use the right mortar recipe. So what's the recipe today? Right, very important. Today we're gonna use a type N, which allows for this brick to move just a little bit. And it is one part Portland cement, two part lime, and six part of very fine sand. On the front of the house, Norm and Tommy worked together to address the rotted porch. And you know what, this was obviously a repair right here because this is a pressure treated post right here. This pine is not original, it's new pine. So when they trimmed this all over, they knew that there was something wrong with this beam, but they just didn't want to deal with it. All right, I've cut our new four by six and let's slide that into place. Well, the structure is all taken care of. Now a few pieces of decking. Well, how do you like our posts? These are pretty nice. Yeah, I got them from our friend John at the Eco Building Bargain Store. I'll let the jack down and put some pressure on it. Okay, now I'm coming down. Watch right. your fingers. All right, clear. How's it look, Norm? That looks good, Tom. It's a dramatic improvement. Well, that's good. Roger was giving the task of breaking up and removing the old concrete walkway and replacing it with slabs of bluestone. What we do is we mix up a whole batch of the stone dust with water. When I set it down into this, it's just going to conform to all those grooves in the bottom of the stone. Good, right there. And clean it up. More of the same all around the outside. Roger, I like the look. It's a little rustic, it's a little modern, just like our house. Looks great. Yeah, so what comes next? Well, we're gonna let it dry overnight and then we're gonna come in tomorrow and sweep the joints with polymeric sand. All right, nice job, thank you. Thanks. Well, it's good to see this. The plasterers are starting to make their way down the stairwell, which means the plastering is complete here on the second floor. It also means that Tom can start on the interior trim. And we're gonna start with the window trim. Now, Tom, uh, the architect calls for Scandinavian style. So what does that mean for our trim? Well, Scandinavian to me is pretty simple. It's straight, sharp lines. So look right here. Here's this photo of the window. The style and rail system on the window with a cap on the top and a stool that sits right in between the style and rails. So if I look at the cross section of the window, and you look at the detail here, the, the trim itself for this size window is pretty small. It's two and a half inches on the style and the rails, and our cap piece is an inch, and the stool goes right in between them, and that is about an inch and an eighth. All right. Now we're going to join the styles to the rails and make a frame before we attach it to the window. And we're going to use pocket screw joinery. And here's a sample. It's very simple joinery. Make a pocket for a screw and assemble the two pieces. And what we end up with is a very strong joint and it's never going to open up. Now to assemble the pieces, we're going to use this clamp, which is very useful. And we use these special screws. These are pocket hole screws. They have a nice flat head so that they're going to hold and be very strong. Okay, all right. Now I have a nice, strong joint. That's not gonna come apart. Now we'll do the other end and repeat the process. All right, how you look up there? Perfect up here. Okay, perfect here. Let me just center it a little bit. Good, I'm gonna tack it. Now we're using a piece of inch and a quarter poplar for the window stool, which Tommy has ripped to width. And it's a little bit longer than what we need. It has to be notched and cut to length. All right, now I want to lay out the various transitions. I'm going to use my combination square, I'm starting here from the inside. Make a mark, slide it over. And a little bit more. Okay, now do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to take my compass to complete the layout. 
I'm going to set it to the inside right here, to the inside of the stool. Move it out to this notch. Make a mark. Move it out to this one. Make a mark. Move it out to this one. Okay, let's check that out. A few nails. Now we'll top it off with this cap piece and we'll be all done. Well, it is a simple design, I can say that. Well, that's what the architect drew, that's what the homeowner wanted, and I guess that's the Scandinavian way. In keeping with the Scandinavian way, for the living room, the homeowners chose a high-efficiency but wood-burning fireplace. You'll uh, see temperatures up to at least 800 degrees. So 800, so I know mm -hmm. that wood can actually combust at what, about 400 degrees, right? Right. So how are we going to protect these 2 by 4s from catching on fire? Well, that's the purpose of this outer protective heat shield shell. It's got a lot of insulation and it protects that in. So I can see right here, it's almost two inch of insulation here. Yep. And also there's these standoffs right here. So that's going to leave a little air gap, right? Yeah, yeah. First thing we have to do, Richard, is put this sort of flexible aluminum duct work through the outside hole that we've provided That's going to bring here. combustion air in. Yep. Okay. So firebox in place, combustion air is connected, but we still need to get that 800 degrees of temperature out of the building. Yeah, and to do that, we're going to use this connector. This fits directly into the firebox that we just inserted. This piece allows us to make the transition to standard metal chimney. And that pipe is actually a pipe in a pipe. You can see right here, this is a cutaway, the stainless steel on the inside stainless steel on the outside, and in between, it's ceramic wool, and that really insulates. This is going to handle temperatures up to about 2,100 degrees. Now, these pipes come in a series of lengths, four, three, two, one, with all sorts of fittings. And John, you'll get this up through the building, and each connection is going to be snapped together. Go ahead. Now, as you get up through the building, sooner or later, we're going to reach the roof. So there is a roof flange that's going to stick down here. We'll make that water tight. And then at the very top, we're going to have a cap, like so. Now, are there any special tricks to operate the stove? Once you get a hot fire going in here, you control its intensity with this lever. It increases or decreases your heat output. All right. And it uses natural convective flow. It draws the air in at the bottom, circulates through, and the hot air comes out at the top. But it's going right around the firebox. Ex All the combustion air is coming from outside. Exactly. And there's no fan. No fan whatsoever, just a natural convective well, I flow. I tell you, it's a beautiful looking unit. I would love to load that up with wood today, but it's about, what, 95 degrees? <laughs> yeah, I think we'll do it another day. Yeah. yeah. The design aesthetic for this house is going to be a lot of white on white. We're going to have white walls with white ceilings. In the kitchen, we're going to have white cabinets, and there's even going to be white tile backsplash. So the thinking is, well, let's warm it up in a couple key areas with some wood. So the island countertop is going to be wood. A hood over the stove is going to be trimmed out in wood. And we're thinking, why not put some wood on the ceiling so it's not all just plaster? And to me, Tommy, it looks like uh, you picked the bay window for the first spot to get that treatment. Right, the bay windows on the first floor are going to have this right here. Here. This is actually southern yellow pine with a six inch face mm -hmm. and it's tongue and groove. Yep. All right. Now, the trick to this is this is an old house. The bay is actually pretty crooked. All right. But the architect wants the boards on the ceiling to go in this direction and they want it to be tight to the ceiling and to the wall without any space because there's not going to be any molding. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a notch right across the top on each side, and then we can take the board and slide it into that groove. The painter will then come back, touch up the wall, because he has to do some touch up anyway. Oh yeah, flush, perfectly flush, that's great. In the final weeks of construction, the crew worked to add the details that would bring this home to life fully embracing the ideals of Scandinavian modern design. Okay, Tom, you ready for this? Including this 600-pound, custom-made, wrap-around maple countertop. 
which became the centerpiece of the first floor. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks nice. nice. Look at this. X-arm handles, beautifully built and mm -hmm. really heavy. And look at this touch spot. And then we just line up the pattern, push it into place. After seven months, the This Old House team met the homeowner's goal of building a brand new home inside the shell of this 1887 Victorian. For my taste, up until about a day ago, there was too much white in this house. But now that I see it all finished, you realize the white is really just a perfect backdrop for all the beautiful things that they have. It is. You really notice all the details. This is the rug that we used. It's made here in Boston. It's felt. And we did a stripe pattern. And where the two colors meet, we did a stitching over it. So it just adds another texture. The gray in the rug is picked up in the swivel chairs on one side and then the sectional on the other. Yeah, a great sectional. The family will really hang out here, and it's kid-friendly. Now we've got the wood on the ceiling in this room, and this is the biggest use of this effect. And it also, it sets up this wall, which I think is the most important wall in the house. A lot of thought went into what's sure going did. over here on this wall. We've got the uh, perfectly square television built into the little recess. We've got the firebox, which is black, but it's offset with the white plaster. And then we start to bring those tones back in. Yeah, the stone we found is really gorgeous. It has a white veining and incorporates all the colors that we used in the room. And a cool storage box for the wood. And you can see that wall from the entire first floor. Yeah, and then this dining room is defined by this table. It's a table from Sally's parents, and then at the very end, it's anchored with a window seat. So, Andrew, we have seen and heard about the functionality of the kitchen, but you guys added some design elements for us? We did. We found this great tile that Sally loves. It's got a crosshatch gray and white pattern in it, keeping the color theme going. Mm -hmm. She liked it so much, we thought, why not bring it up to the ceiling? So a lot more than just a backsplash. Exactly. And then we've got the front bay window. Yeah, one of the things on Sally's list was a kind of out-of-the-way, quieter sitting area. Um, these were chairs that they had. We put some new fabric on them. and. It's a great spot. All right, well, you and Dee know you're Scandinavian modern. It looks great. And Tommy, when you've got a minimalist design like this, I guess it all comes down to execution because there's really no place to hide. No, it looks pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but you have to make sure everything's straight before the finishes go in. All right, well, John, Sally, we hope you guys are happy. We could not be happier. The house is so beautiful, and the work that everyone has done is amazing. We want to thank Richard and Roger and Tom for, and all the subcontractors for everything. Well, thank you. Scandinavian modern design, focused on clean, simple lines, maximizing natural light wherever possible, minimalism and functionality without sacrificing beauty.